Hey, how's it going today? And we're just going to be making a basic automatic door. I hope this doesn't take too long. So we'll give it the old college try and see what happens. We're just in a game blank project with the starter content. And we'll just go create. It takes a minute to load up. And then we're good to go. This is a, something I think that has a lot of application. So even though we have a starter content and it's blank, it comes in with this furniture loaded in already. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to come over here to the outliner and select the hold down control and select the chair, the statue and the table. And then I'm just going to hit delete. And then all I have to do is come down here under content and we search for door. I'm going to door frame and I'm going to drag that onto the scene. And here on the location, I'm going to put that on zero right there. And I'll just zoom out a little tiny bit. And then I'll grab the door and I'll try this the best I can to put it in position. Half of this tutorial is almost just trying to get this door properly placed. So there we go. And we have our door and our door frame. Now what I'm going to do is these widgets are really in my way. And the other thing is that I don't have the functionality to orbit around the door. So that makes it very difficult to do anything. So let me hit G to get rid of those widgets. They're called widgets. I call them widgets. And we're going to go into edit, edit preferences and just search for orbit. O B I T. Oops. And it's this one right here. Click that and close that. Now, if you click select something like the door, it makes it very easy to orbit around if you hold down alt. So see how easy that is to navigate there. The only problem is that if you have the translate tool activated, it's very easy to duplicate the door if you press down alt. So if you press down alt, you can orbit, yes. But if you accidentally click and drag, you can duplicate the door. And this can start becoming a source of frustration. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those extra doors. So what to do about that is when you click on something, all you have to do is just get off of that, that tool. And then also try using these controls over here to better navigate. Because otherwise, uh, it's going to be endlessly frustrating. So I'm going to hit Alt. And now I'm at no risk of duplicating the door. So I can come over here and use these controls to move the door so I can see. I can center it right there. Hit Alt. I can orbit back around. I can see it. there's a gap right there. What I can do is come up here to the grid. And it's at 10. That's too much. So if I put it at 1, the grid snapping at 1, I have a lot finer control. So now I'm just going to try to scooch the door over and get it centered. And then I'm going to hit Alt and look around this whole thing, and it looks pretty well, pretty good to me. So that's good enough for government work. So we're just going to go ahead and call that a day. So now all we need to do is bring in what's called a box trigger. And to be able to see that, unfortunately, we have to bring our gadgets back. So I'm going to hit G again to bring back those things. And then I'm going to come up here to basic and go to trigger box. And I'm going to hit Alt. And we can see it's way back there. So using these controls again, I can just reposition it over here near the door. The other thing I can do is increase the lines thickness so that I can see it a lot clearer. I'm going to hit Alt. I'm going to kind of come back here. Just looking at it from all different angles. I can hit F to bring it better into focus. Hit Alt again to refocus here. And then I can just come over here. Now, just real quick. Box extent allows me to scale it just the same as if I scale it up here. The only difference is box extent only affects the this trigger box, this individual trigger box. If I scale it, it not only affects the trigger box, but it'll also affect any children of this box. So either way you want to do it is fine for, for our purposes here. So I'm going to make this a little bit taller and then I'm going to make it a little wider and then I'm going to make it, I want to go that way, yeah. So it's a, it's a big trigger. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter how big it is. And of course it's looking pretty crazy with the line thickness so much, but 
you might want to turn that line thickness down to just a hair or so but that's our box to trigger it so actually I, I think I do want to trigger it going out more maybe along the Z no not this way not that way this way because I want the door to open you know when I get relatively close to it okay and I think that's a pretty good size trigger it doesn't have to be uh, perfect and of course you can move the location of it right there so we're going to go with that so that's basically I can turn off I can hit G and kill all the gadgets here so I don't have to see them again so that's basically the, the half of the battle right there just getting our door in getting the trigger in and getting everything kind of situated and whoops what the heck oh the other thing that's kind of annoying sometimes is the camera speed I know this is really fast, so um, I'm going to hit F to bring this back into focus now. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, with the trigger box selected, and this is important because then it affects what happens when I go into the, the blueprint. So if I have the trigger box selected and then I go into the blueprint, then all the references to that item are going to be already loaded in for me. So if I go into the level blueprint now, if I right click it see how it already has uh, references already in there and stuff so everything's already lined up for me so I just need a begin overlap and I'll right click again and I need another one a end overlap so when I make first contact with the box it's gonna open when I make last contact it's gonna close so anyway then all we have to do is I right click again and I can type in what's called the timeline and go add timeline here and double click this and now I'm in the timeline so I'm going to add what's called a float track and then all I have to do here is let me let me dock this window and I'm just going to come whoops me dock it and go back in here now if I come on the door let me see make sure I'm on the door right here if I hit the rotation I can see that it's going to go to open the door fully is about 120 118 right in there so 0 to 118 is the values I need to know so I'll come on here on the float track and I right click and I can add a keyframe and it's at 0 then I'm going to come down here it can be anywhere down here two second mark somewhere right click add a keyframe and then here we're going to type in 120 and that'll set our motion for the door and we go save and we're done now the next thing I need to do is with the door selected actually I need to make sure that it's set on movable because otherwise it won't work and then I can jump back into the graph event graph here and now if I right click I should need to search for something called sent set actor rotation Oops. set actor relative rotation this one here and you'll notice when I because I had the door selected it automatically comes wired up and then the last thing I got to do is just drag this into here but this is a float which is one decimal value and this is a vector which is three so I can split this into three by right clicking and just go split struck pin now I can just drag this into the z-axis and then I can drag this into play I can drag this into return reverse I mean and update into the rotation and that's our whole animation that's all we need so compile and save that come back in here and if I did everything correctly if I hit play and go forward the door should open and of course is it opening oh it is what's going on there it is so go forward here see it open and then I go through and there it closes so we're all set so I got to stand here to let the door open because it takes a couple seconds so that's how you create an automatic open door it's as simple as that so anyway I hope you found this helpful take care and have a great day
Thank you.